To me, a gang member is someone that's just from the gang and all they're doing is just walking around the hood, doing drugs. You know, they're in it for the fame. They're just gang members. And then you got a gang banger where this guy, he's walking around with the gun. He's looking for enemies. He's, he's trying to make a name for himself by putting in work. That's the difference. A gang member's not doing that. They're just in it for the hell of it. And then you got the gang banger that's willing to risk it all. My first time that I went to the juvenile hall was 14 years old, and I went to Central Juvenile Hall. And at first, I didn't know what to expect. You know, you hear all these rumors like, Joe, you dropped the soap. You're going to get raped and whoop de whoop. And it's nothing like that in there. And um, I got there, and some dude bangs on me, like, where you from? I'm from Lennox 13. I'm from Florencia. I'm like, all right, that's cool. And once they put me in that cell, I looked at myself in the mirror, and I told myself, like, man, I need to start banging like that, too. So I started looking at myself in the mirror, like, just for West Side Lane Knox. Lane Knox. Like, you know, adjusting my attitude. So the next time someone banged on me, I had the right attitude for it. And um, you pretty much learn how to adapt in there you understand that you're not going anywhere. It is what it is. You're not the Hulk. You're not going to Hulk smash out these walls. You just got to learn how to live day by day and accept it. You, you changed a little bit while you were... Well, in I think it makes you worse. You know, it, it, uh, you, you go in just knowing about your hood, but then you go in and you start learning about different neighborhoods, and then you learn who they beef with, and, and you just... We're supposed to be in school learning math and science or whatever the hell they teach us in there, but we ain't even paying attention to that. We're learning other gangs. We're learning, we're meeting new homies. We're meeting, you know, it's, it's just a different environment in there. When it comes to gangs, Hispanic gangs in LA, mm -hmm. they're all set up in different sections, you know, different cards. You got the West Side card, you got the East Side card, you got the Southeast card, you got the Harbor area. There's so many different cards. SGV. SGV. San Fernando. Exactly. That we all have different views into gangbanging and we all carry ourselves a different way. I noticed that because I'm in Lenox. What's around Lenox? Inglewood. What's around, what's on the other side? Hawthorne. Inglewood and Hawthorne is populated by blacks, a lot of blacks. So I went to school and grew up with a lot of blacks. So by the time I'm in juvenile hall and all that, I'm cool with blacks, you know, I'm, I, I'm cool with them. But then you meet people from like the east side that they don't have no blacks around them, never. So they're in there and they're just like, oh, these mayates on me, and woo woo woo. But I don't give a fuck, man. Shout out to all my black cellmates I ever had. Rest in peace, Yellowstone from Black P Stones, TS from Neighborhood 55, um, Touche from Rolling 40s. You know, those were all cellies that I grew a bond with immediately. But there's, there's only, only the Latinos that grew up in South LA established those relationships. If you're from East LA, Boyle Heights, Southeast. It's it's odd for them. It's yeah. different. They don't know how to react when it comes down to getting selled up with a Moreno, you know? And I also find it interesting that a lot of Latinos in South LA will say nigga, but the ones that live that are from the valley or East LA they, work, don't, they say don't say nigga. Yeah, you know? in my in my area, everyone says that word. Yeah. I know when to turn it on and off and I'm not gonna say it now because I know there's going to be black viewers and they don't want to see that. They don't like it, but... But let's talk about it. The reality is if you're Latino or Mexican and you grow up in South LA, you say nigga like everybody else does. Yeah, right? yeah. And you feel that you still might get some uh, backlash for people knowing that because you're not black? What do you mean? Like you said, you don't, you don't want to say it on camera because it might well, be disrespectful to, to some black people. Okay, blacks... 
in LA, like other gang members, they don't give a fuck. You know, they know it's normal, but let's say your other viewers in fucking South Carolina or, you know, they're like, why is this Mexican saying the N word? Yeah. You know, they, it's just, I know when to turn it on and off. When I'm at the store and when I'm at school or, or I'm at work, I don't talk like that. So, so what's interesting, there is like a, um, a fusion of, of culture here in Lenox or Inglewood or Hawthorne where you have your Latino side, of course, but you're absorbing some of the black culture, whether it's hip hop music, yeah, um, you know, the, the language, the, the slang. slang, yeah. And that's all because we grew up with each other. Like I used to play tag with these kids, hide and seek. So, I mean, it's just normal for me. Now, when you get to prison, do people kind of that are not from this part of LA look at that different, or do they understand it? No, nah, they they look at it different. They don't they don't understand. Like like I said, you got the East Los card. I mean, shout out to my East Los card. You know, I got love for y'all. But man, you guys are super Southsiders. They're like the super cholos, the ones that shave their heads, long socks, Cortezes, and um. They live up to the stereotype of a cholo, and people out here in West LA, South LA, Compton, Watts. All of that, we're just more gutter, you know, we're just more grimier, we're just more, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. No, I think you're explaining it perfectly well, that there's a... It makes sense though, right? Even within the Latino gang culture, there's factions that spawn different culture. Yeah. And then what, what's the next thing that happens to you in terms of incarceration? So then you get out. I got released and then, you know, my head was all pumped up, thinking I was a shit. I just did some time. I got down with a couple enemies. So I come out to the hood, I'm bragging about it. Um, got my chest out now. And a month later, I get busted again. And I go to camp this time. Uh, I did six months, my first camp program. And same shit, you just, you just, you, I don't know, that's, that's all I knew. Now, what's the difference between juvenile hall and camp? Juvenile hall is just a facility where they keep, you know, juveniles in, in their little cells. And then when it's time for program, they come out for like an hour or two, and then they go back into their cells. And then camp is just a big ass dorm with racks and racks of racks of racks of beds, just bunk beds next to each other. And, um, it's just, it's just, it's a different program. You know, it's, it's better than juvenile hall because you eat better. They give us better food. Um, the, the schools are better. And then I got released. I think I did like two months, then went back in. And I did nine months in camp. Then same shit, I got out, probably was out like three months. And then went back in, went to a group home, a placement. First week there, I AWOLed. And then I was out here in the streets with a warrant. And finally, I ended up getting caught. And I go see the judge. And this time, she sentenced me to California Youth Authority, where it's way different than juvenile hall. It's gladiator school. Well, California Youth Authority is just, it's just active. It's just fighting every day. That's all it is. And, um, I was involved in all in several fights in there. Why, um, do you, why do you think California Youth Authority has so much more fighting than in camp or juvenile hall? Because in camp and juvenile hall, everyone's in there for petty shit. They're probably in there for like a month or two, and that's that. Everyone that's in YA, they got like two years and up. Most of them are going to prison after they're doing, after they turn 18. And they just don't give a fuck. And when you're in there, you learn not to give a fuck. You just adapt to, to your environment, you know? I was out for one month and I got caught with a gun. Then that's my first time I went to the LA County Jail. And at that time, it was during a time where they had all the Southsiders separated from the blacks. And um, so in one dorm, it was nothing but Southsiders. It, it was, it was a, different experience. 
you know, a lot of politics is different than YA and juvenile hall because there's more rules and regulations. And the South Siders, they're just way more structured and they, they're just real organized to the point where there's no fuck ups. It's been, a, I got out 2013 and I've slowly changed. Not that long ago, I was still fucking up, but I'm good now. And my mom's proud of me because I am working. It's a stable job. I'm getting paid good, so it beats dope dealing. So I've been thinking outside the box, and I can't gangbang forever. I'm 29 years old. I got to get a hobby besides gangbanging. Some people like to collect baseball cards. Other people collect seashells. Some people like to do karaoke. Some people rap. You know, whatever floats their boat. Me, what I want to do and I, what I've got to drive in doing is a podcast. And in my podcast, I just want to interview different personalities, just different people. I don't care if you're a gang member or not a gang member, but as long as we talk about, you know, how we can make a difference in the community. But what I want to do I want to interview other gang members or former gang members that think outside the box. I want to name my podcast Outside the Box. So, for instance, we got this guy right here. He uh, was an active gang member, and now he has his own business. He's an electrician. I want to know how did he get there? What route did he take to become an electrician? What schools did he have to do? What degrees? You know, so maybe the, the young generation that are listening and looking at my podcast can probably get an idea and be like, hey, maybe I should go that route. Because gangbanging is not the way, trust me. You're gonna, all that saying, you end up dead or in jail, it's true. I'm just blessed, I'm still here. One of the things that made me look at gangbanging different, and I asked myself, like, is this really what I want. Here, let me tell you a story. I had a young homie. He got killed. And when he got killed, you go to his car wash, it's packed. You got everybody there. Teachers, you got uh, friends, family, homies, and everybody's supporting. You go to his funeral, everyone's there. It's like over 100 people. And he's just a newcomer. You know, he never did much for the hood, but everybody loved him. Now, I had my other friend who pretty much lived like me. Like, we've done so much for Lennox. We sacrificed our freedom for Lennox. We've cried, we've bled. We've done it all for Lennox. He's been to prison and everything. So he, he pretty much has more stats than this young dude. But when he got killed, there was nobody at his funeral, like, it's sad. Like, I thought he's supposed to get more love for everything he's done for the hood. But only people that were there was, like, his family and certain homies. Um, and that's when I told myself, do I want to go down like that? When I die, is it going to be this empty? Because I don't really fuck with the young dudes, so I don't know if they're going to come to my and I don't really want them because I don't know them, you know, but it's just, it's a cold world and I don't want to die for Lennox. I want to die for my kids. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.